Hello everybody. In this Swift programming tutorial, we're going to go over how to create an iOS stopwatch app that looks like this. So we'll have three buttons, start, pause, and a stop reset button. So if we click start, the stopwatch begins. Then we can pause it. We can hit start again. And of course, we can stop and reset. Okay? So let's go ahead and start from scratch. So let's close Xcode. Let's go ahead and open it back up. We'll go to create a new Xcode project. We're going to use the iOS single view app. Click next. And we'll just call this stopwatch. Now, the first thing we want to do is go to Storyboard, and let's begin to build the interface for our stopwatch. The first thing we want to do is look for a label. Let's go ahead and drag it on to our storyboard. Let's make it a little bit bigger, and we'll go ahead and center it. Now let's go ahead and look for a button. We need three of those so we can copy it and paste it three times. So this button will be the start, and this button will be the pause, and this button will be the stop. Now we will need to make an update to this, but we'll do that here in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and put this in split screen view with the view controller. So let's hold down Option, click View Controller, and we can go ahead and delete all of this code here. Then let's hook up our label as an outlet. Click Connect. Let's go ahead and hook up our Start button as an action. We'll just call it Start, and we'll make it UI button. Connect. Let's hook up our pause button as an action, UI button, connect. Let's hook up our stop button as an action, we'll call it stop, UI button, connect. Okay, so for now, we can hide this storyboard. So let's go up here and click on show standard editor. We just want to see our view controller. Let's click that. And the first thing we want to do is to create a variable for our timer. So we'll say var timer equals timer. The next thing we want to do is create some variables that will hold the times for our hours, minutes, seconds, and fractional seconds. We're going to put these all on one line. So to do that, let's type out hours minutes, seconds, and fractions. And let's go ahead and set them all to zero. Now, let's go to our start button. Let's go ahead and use our timer variable. And we want to assign timer dot scheduled timer. And we want this scheduled timer here. For the time interval, we want 0.01. .01. The target will be self. For the selector, that will be the method that we're going to create here in just a second that will update the time. So let's put in pound sign, selector, view controller, and the method that we will create will be called keep time. For the user info, let's just put in nil, and repeats is true. Now, let's go ahead and create our keep time method. So the first thing we're going to use is going to be the fractions variable here. And to start the time and to allow it to accumulate, we want the fractions to add 1 as the timer is going. 
And since we chose the time interval of 0 0.01, that will start the fractional seconds and it will accumulate time and then over time that will add to the seconds and then to the minutes and then to the hours. Next, if the fractions are greater than 99, we want the seconds to accumulate. And to do that, we're just gonna use the plus equals one. And then go ahead and reset the fractions to zero. And you'll notice that we'll use this same pattern to accumulate the time from the fractional seconds to the seconds to the minutes and hours. Okay, next, if the seconds equals 60, go ahead and add a minute. So we'll use the minutes plus equals one. And go ahead and reset the seconds to zero. Then if the minutes equals 60, go ahead and add to the hours, plus equals one, and reset the minutes to zero. Next, let's use our time label, text, and let's put in a string. We'll use string interpolation, And let's put in our hours, our minutes, our seconds, and our fractions. Now one thing we'll probably have to do if you use this kind of selector is mark this function a certain way. So let's go ahead and check out this error. And you can see that it's suggesting that we do that by using at objc. So we can just simply click fix and you can see that it put that in. Now we're gonna build this app in stages. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we have so far. Let's go up here and choose iPhone 7 and let's run it. Okay, let's go ahead and click the start button and see what happens. So here we have our fractional seconds, and here we have our seconds, and our minutes, and our hours. Now, there's a few things that we're going to want to do to fix this. One thing you'll notice is that this label is kind of moving and shaking. So we're going to work to fix that. And another thing you might notice is for the seconds, and the minutes, and the hours, you only have one digit placeholder until the number gets large enough. So we're gonna fix that as well. Let's go ahead and click stop. Let's go back to our storyboard and let's add another label. So let's make this label just a little bit smaller. Let's drag on another label. Now, for placeholder's sake, let's go ahead and put in our fractional seconds. So we'll put in a dot and two zeros. Then here, let's put in our hours, colon, minutes, colon, seconds. Let's shrink this label a little bit, and let's try and center this. So we'll select both of these labels. Okay, so that looks pretty close to being centered. Let's go back to our split screen view, and we need to hook up this fractional seconds label here. So by putting the fractional seconds into another label, that should help fix that problem of the shakiness of the time as the time accumulates. So let's go ahead and click Control, drag. This will be an outlet, and we'll just call this fractions label. Click Connect. So earlier for the time label, here we put everything in one string. Now let's go ahead and use our fractions label, text equals string, string interpolation, and let's put in our fractions. So we can get rid of this. Let's go ahead and run it. 
Let's hit start. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit better. Now one thing we can do to separate the fractional seconds from the hours, minutes, and seconds is we can put a dot right here. The next thing we need to do is set up some kind of if test to make sure that the zeros are in place at appropriate times. So for example, if the seconds here are below 10, we want this to go from 1 to 9 and the 0 to stay there. Then after 9, we want this 0 here to go away and allow these two numbers to become double digit numbers such as 10, 11, all the way to 59 and so on. So to do that, we can use the ternary conditional operator. So let's create a variable. We'll call it let seconds string equals seconds. And if the seconds are greater than 9, let's put in our string to show the seconds just as they are. So that would be if they're double digit. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. Then, if the seconds are not greater than 9, we want to go ahead and put that 0 in as a placeholder. So that would be right here. So let's put in a 0, put in our string interpolation, seconds. Now we can take this variable here and copy it and put it in here. So let's go ahead and test it. Okay, so we're going to hit start. And before, if you noticed, these two digits here, if it was a single digit number, that's all that it showed was the single digit number. And then when it became a double digit number, as soon as the seconds became 10 or greater, it changed. But as we said, we want this leading zero to always be there if the seconds is less than 10. So that's what this code is aimed to solve. So let's go to our simulator. Let's go ahead and hit start. And you'll notice that that leading zero stays there. Now we also want to do the same things for the minutes and the hours. Okay, so we'll type out minutes string equals minutes greater than nine. Just go ahead and show the minutes as normal. Otherwise, go ahead and put in the zero before. And we can do the same thing for the hours. So let's go ahead and take the minute string and put it in here and the hour string and put it in here. Let's go ahead and run it. Let's hit the start. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty good. Let's go ahead and try and change the font for these labels and make them a little bit bigger and see if that helps as well. So let's select both of these. Let's go over here. And for the font, let's go to custom. And then let's choose courier. Okay, now let's go ahead and try and run it. Click start. So that looks pretty good. We have our fractional seconds, our seconds, our minutes, and our hours. And you'll notice that a lot of the shakiness and the movement is gone. So now we need to be able to pause this and or stop it and reset it. So let's go ahead and go to our standard view with just the view controller. Let's go to our pause button and to be able to allow that pause button to pause the time we can use our timer variable 
dot invalidate. Then for the stop button, we're also going to use the timer dot invalidate. However, we will also need to reset those labels. So to do that, we can use the time variables that we set up here that we set to zero. We'll just put that in down here and that will reset them to zero. We also need to reset the labels which we created as outlets here. So that would be the time label dot text. And let's reset that to hours colon minutes colon seconds. And for the fractions label text, we'll reset that to dot zero zero. Let's run it. Let's click start. Our timer starts. Let's click pause. You can see it pauses. Start again. It restarts. And let's click stop. And you can see it resets and stops. So let's just hit these buttons a few more times to continue to test it. Okay, so, so far everything looks like it's working pretty good. However, there is one test that will probably make this fail. So if we click start, and then we click start again, and then we try and hit pause, it stops working correctly. Okay, so you notice that it starts doing some weird things. So let's go ahead and fix that. Now one thing we can do to fix that is once we've pressed the start button, it's just to go ahead and hide it unless we need it again. So to do that, let's go back to our storyboard. Let's go to our split view. And let's add an outlet for the start button. OK, so we have our outlet for the start button. Let's go to our start button action here. And when this button is pressed, after it's pressed, we want to go ahead and hide that start button. So to do that, let's use our start outlet dot is hidden equals true. However, when we pause or stop the stopwatch, we want that start button to show back up. So to do that, we can use our start outlet is hidden equals false. OK, let's run it. Let's hit start. You can see it starts. And our start button is hidden. However, when we click pause, you can see it comes back. So now we can start it back up again. We can click pause, restart. We can also click start, it's hidden. And then when we click stop, it stops, resets, and the start comes back. OK. OK, so that's all we have for this Swift programming tutorial. We will be doing many more Swift tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.